night to the most fabulous and celebrated place in the world. Here on the plateau of Gizeh stands forever the mightiest of human achievements. No traveler, emperor, merchant or poet has trodden on these sands and not gasped in awe. The curtain of night is about to rise and disclose the stage on which the drama of a civilization took place. Those involved have been present since the dawn of history, pitched stubbornly against sand and wind. voice of the desert has crossed the centuries. With each new dawn, I see the sun god rise on the far bank of the Nile. His first ray is for my face, which is turned towards him. <laughs> and for five thousand years, I have seen all the suns men can remember come up in the sky. I saw the history of Egypt in its first glow, as tomorrow I shall see the east burning with a new flame. I am the faithful warden at the foot of his lord. So faithful, so vigilant, so near him that he gave me his face for my own. I am a Pharaoh's companion, and I am he, the Pharaoh. Through the ages, I received many names from the people who came to me in adoration. Oh, Hamakis, you are my life's safeguard. Horus, protect me, oh great God, that I might see you every day. Lord of the desert, Lord of the heavens, Sovereign of eternity. But the name which has remained with me is that given to me by a Greek traveler, the father of history, Herodotus. He called me Sphinx, as if I were from his land. And that name is now mine. Close to the Nile, I watch over the plateau of Gizeh, over all its monuments of modest or fantastic height. They are tombs. Civilizations are like islands on the ocean of barbarism. Over this one, the Sphinx has gazed and watched for 5,000 years. At the foot of such mountains of stone, everything becomes minute and insignificant. Man is an insect. Yet, it was men who built these massive monuments. And the names of pharaohs whose tombs they are have crossed the ages. Their glory has defeated time. Pharaoh of 
the fourth dynasty 4,500 years ago. Here is the great pyramid which he built to defend himself against death. 455 feet high. He achieved the building of the highest monument then known to man. The area it covers is vast enough to hold St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome, the cathedrals of Florence and Milan, Westminster Abbey and St. Paul's. Three million blocks of stone, some of them weighing 30 tons, were assembled by Cheops' faithful workmen to achieve this fabulous construction. At the center of it, the pharaoh planned his inner chamber, where his mummy was to lie in splendor for eternity. At the foot of this pyramid, in the rock, a temple was built. And there were kept the barges of Cheops, the barges of night. In these large wooden vessels, the dead pharaoh could continue his voyage in darkness towards eternity. But all that remains of him is a small ivory figure showing a noble face, the nose aquiline, the jaw determined, and the hieroglyphs representing the name he gave to his pyramid. Cheops dominates the horizon. A pyramid of Kephron. It too bears an inscription, Kephron is great. Yet, out of respect for his father Cheops, Kephron built his pyramid on a slightly smaller scale. Each side of the base measuring 710 feet, the angle being 52 degrees, it reaches a height of 445 feet. The brilliant covering of polished limestone on the apex originally extended over all four sides, adding to the magnificence of the pyramid. The face of Kephron has come down to us sculpted in green diorite streaked with white. A rare stone he brought back from an expedition. Here he is close to us, in the guise of the Sphinx, carved in rock near his tomb. monumental tomb was soon to complete this immense funeral site of Gizeh and make it one of the wonders of the world. Though smaller, the pyramid of Mykelinos is perhaps the most impressive for being the culminating point of a vast design. Having built it, the workmen climbed down from its granite flanks and laying down their tools, looked up with wonderment. <laughs> 